Welcome to Popcorn News. Something to watch while you eat popcorn. Poland is much in the news lately. There, a new right-wing government, the Law and Justice Party, has taken power. But what is this Poland? I sometimes call it the Poland. Edgar Allan Poe had Irish ancestors. He was descended from one David Poe of Cavan County, Ireland. But the P.O. root belongs to a vanished worldwide language. So the Poe in Poland was once universal to Ireland, Poland, and other nations. One way to understand Poland is from its literature. History books are fine, but the literature can give a unique perspective on a nation's history. For instance, U.S. history from the first half of the 1900s is sketched by author John Dos Passos in his USA Trilogy. The time America was about to enter the First World War. Writing a little later around 1932, Dos Passos has a character describing the real situation. The entire press was bought and muzzled. The Morgans had to fight or go bankrupt. It's the greatest conspiracy in history. The Morgans mentioned by the character Don Stevens, were the big bankers. Their loans had to be enforced. The bought and muzzled press began calling the Germans Huns. The Huns, according to the news back then, had cut off the hands of little Belgian babies. So what are you going to do about that, Mr. Joe Sixpack? Among the giants of Polish literature is Count Jan Potaki. He wrote a strange book the manuscript found in Saragossa. The proofs of part of the Saragossa manuscript appeared in St. Petersburg, Russia in 1805. Part of the novel appeared in Paris, France in 1813. Potaki died in 1815 in a strange suicide in which a silver bullet delivered death. 
in Pataki's book is found, among many things, a conversation on spirits, specters, and vampires. In antiquity, says one of the characters, they were called impusi, larvae, and lamiae. And what do we find reported upon only a few days ago in the International Business Times, but that skeletons in a cemetery in northwest Poland have been discovered with sickles at their throats. It is vaguely interpreted to mean that the placement of the curved knives is thought to be a burial practice believed to ward off demons. International Business Times even assures readers in its headline that these were not vampires, but in fact, the curved knives at the throats of the skeletons were for the purpose of preventing vampirism. In Homer's Odyssey, Odysseus summons spirits from the beyond. The spirits came from every quarter and made a strange kind of screaming sound, which terrified Odysseus. Odysseus kept the specters away from the blood of two sacrificed sheep with a drawn sword. The point to notice is the sword of Odysseus which keeps the spirits away from blood. Just as in the Polish cemetery, sickles at the throats of some buried persons prevented their etheric doubles from roaming at night. The etheric double is not the same as the astral body. In normal cases, the etheric body, known also as the doppelganger, lingers near the corpse only a few days. However, in the case of so-called vampires, a symbiotic relationship between the corpse, the corpse and its etheric double causes the double to roam about and feed on the life force, then return to the corpse and provide it also with a sort of life. All this provides some inkling that Poland is not your average place. A secret circle spy network was established in Poland after the Bolsheviks overthrew the Tsarist government. Among those who escaped Russia and journeyed to Poland were Tsar Nicholas II, his wife, the Empress Alexandra, and their children. At this point, someone may ask, what about the DNA evidence? I am constantly having to rewind the tape for latecomers and re-explain about the doubtful nature of DNA evidence supposedly proving the Russian Tsar and his family all died in Ekaterinburg in 1918. This did not happen. Here from the archives is something for latecomers. All members of the Russian imperial family escaped as per prior agreement with the Bolsheviks, whereby all concerned would sustain the legend of an assassination. 
arriving in Warsaw, Poland, the Russian imperial family were concealed with the help of Marshal Joseph Pilsudski, called by many the founder of modern Poland. The Empress Alexandra died in 1924, but the Tsar lived a long time and died at age, 50, age 84, which I calculate would have been around 1952. Successor as head of the anti-communist spy network was the Tsar's son, Alexei hiding under the name Michael Golanewski. Golanewski, really Alexei Nikolaevich Romanov, decided to seek assistance from the United States in battling the communists. His father, the Tsar, had been opposed to this because he believed the KGB had already infiltrated such places as the U.S. State Department and the Central Intelligence Agency. But Golanewski, the Tsar's son, thought he could specify dealings only with the U.S. military, which he believed had not been infiltrated by the Communists. Remnants of the Tsar's spy network in Poland may have played a role in the Solidarity Movement there in the 1980s. Poland was the wedge which split apart the Soviet Union. Therefore now, in the context of the European Union, Poland might again be the wedge which either splits apart the EU or at least decentralizes it. In the previous Popcorn News, I gave my take on the current situation in Poland, where the right-wing Law and Justice Party now heads the government. A right-wing Law and Justice Party has been elected in Poland. My take on them is that they want Poland for the Poles. Poland for the Poles was my summary encapsulation. Now I find there is a patriotic anthem, Let Poland Be Poland, which also encapsulates the situation there. Not all Poles are united behind the new Polish nationalism, however. Lech Walesa, hero of the Gdansk shipyards, has gone on record supporting the policies of Marshal Joseph Pilsudski. Lech Walesa reportedly supports the inclinations of the new law and justice government, yet is not happy about how they are being implemented. Walesa wants reforms to be implemented in an open and democratic way. WTF is wrong with Poland asked Michael Cabasco in the Daily Beast on December 20th, 2015. The WTF means what the F word. What the F is going on in Poland? We shall see. It could turn out to be extremely important. Thank you for watching Popcorn News.